Hey GED students, this is a continuation of that idea of not being able to remember rules for negative numbers. Why did I even bother to do a 20 minute video on that? Well, first of all, it was for Liliana, who is one of my patrons on Patreon. Liliana, thank you so much for supporting me monthly. Uh, patrons like you are the way that I am able to do what I do. So thank you for that. And if you aren't a patron and you're able to do so, I humbly would ask you to consider doing that um, to keep me able to keep making these videos. Uh, but that being said, uh, Liliana had wanted to look at these positive and negatives and the way they show up in algebra. So this is help. I can't remember rules for negative numbers too. Guys, this is the algedition. Okay, let's hit it up. Um, first, I want to look at addition and subtraction with algebraic terms this time instead of just plain old regular numbers. So let's look at this here. Now, a lot of students just freak out when they see uh, like a letter A. I want you to just, anytime you are freaking out about a letter, I want you just to take that letter and replace it with something um, that you can think about. If it's hard to think about letters for you, uh, think about anything that, I don't know, starts with that letter. So let's pretend like the word, the letter A just stands for apples. How about that? Okay, so when I think about this then as if an A is just like an apple, what I'm saying here is I'm telling you with the negative sign that I owe you, okay? I'm down. And this will tell you how many, six. I owe you six and six what? Six apples, okay? I owe you six apples. And now I'm going to borrow or take away eight more apples. I already owed you six apples and now I take away or I borrow eight more apples. Guess what? I'm going to be in a lot of apple debt. I'm going to owe a total of 14 apples. Okay. Because they were both going in the negative direction. I owed six and I owed eight. It adds up as we think of it. Yes, it's a subtraction problem, okay? But it accumulates, my debt My debt accumulates. I already had some debt, I got some more debt, and now I'm really in trouble. I owe 14 apples. Let's think about this next situation. This one says, I'm down, I owe you six apples, but look at what happens this time. Instead of getting more debt, I then start paying off my debt. I'm adding into that debt, I'm giving you money, and I give you eight apples. Well, what's going to happen is I'm going to start paying off my debt, okay? You think about I started with negative six apples that I owed you and I start giving you, I give you eight apples. Well, the first um, six of those eight apples that I give you are just going to pay off the debt I owe you. But then I gave you even more than I owed you. And so I'm going to go, I'm basically going to go up eight from negative six. So let's do that for those of you guys who are like, she talks too much, okay? So let's go up eight. Uh, going up once would put me owing you five apples and then negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, and zero. That's what I was talking about the first six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. The first six apples are just going to make it so I have no more debt. But then I don't give you six, I give you eight. So seven, eight puts me at now two apples over. So you've got two apples, or I've got two apples. I don't owe anybody anymore. I paid off my debt. I've got two apples left. Okay, now let's look at the next scenario here. Okay, this time I have six apples six apples, but then I go and I borrow, you know, I need, I got to take away eight. Okay. So six apples take away eight. Well, of course, when you take away the first six, okay, so I've got six apples here and I take away the first six, that's going to put me at zero, five, four, three, two, one, zero. I just took away six, uh, but I'm not wanting to take away six. I'm wanting to take away eight. I'm going to start getting an apple debt, negative one, negative two. And again, these are my jumps I'm counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Down, uh, down eight apples from six apples. And I'm going to be in the hole by two apples. They're not going to suddenly turn into apple squares or oranges or potatoes or anything else. Apples and apples give me still apples. Okay, next situation. This time I'm starting with a, hey, I already did this problem. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, I forgot I wanted to do that. Okay, you guys, this is smart. I was thinking smart things before I started making the video. I want you to look at the difference of this one. A lot of students would just keep going, doing what they've been doing, but take a look here. This time I'm down six apples and then I add 
eight. But look how there's no A this time. It's not eight apples. It's just the number eight. Like think of it like eight dollars or eight of something else. I've got, I owe you six apples and I give you eight dollars. Well, the dollars or the whatever else they are are not affecting the apples at all. And so, you know, all I'm going to have is I'm still going to have a debt of six apples and I'm still going to have eight things. Okay, that being said, the idea here is if they're not, we call them in algebra, like terms. If they're not the same kind of things, we can't add them. I can't add apples with plain old numbers, period. And so there's no work I can do on that problem. It's already as simple as it's going to get. Okay, now let's look on the other side, the multiplying and dividing. Okay, well, it's really just multiplication problems, but it's the same rules for both. So uh, in this case, we still have this eight apple idea, but this time the other number tells you the number of times when we're multiplying, okay? It's not another number of objects, it's a number of times. So this is like, you know, um, I have eight apples borrowed six times, okay? Eight apples borrowed six times. Well, I borrow eight apples one time, I'm gonna be at negative eight. Two times I'm going to be at negative 16. Three times I'm going to be at negative 24. Okay, so probably the easiest way to do this is just to multiply those numbers. Six times eight is 48. And realize that if I went down six times, I went negative six times, that's going to be a negative 48a. And think back to that last video where we said um, when you're multiplying, one sign just sticks around. One negative sign, still a negative sign. Hey, let's look at the next one. This time I had a debt of eight apples, but I took that debt away six times. Again, I had a debt of eight apples, but I took that debt away six times. Um, you know, I take away one eight apple debt, then I'm up eight apples. I take away another eight apple debt, then I'm up 16 apples, okay? Basically the idea here is we still multiply, but the two negatives cancel. If I take away my debt, I'm up, I'm positive, okay? Now, we can see how that kind of carries through here as we multiply things by groupings. So now I wanna look at negative six shoved up against this grouping. That basically means that there's a couple of things happening twice, or I should say happening six times. This negative six is multiplying by the A, this a is happening negative six times and it's multiplying by this positive eight. Adding eight is also happening negative six times if you think about it that way. And so we are gonna just pass this out and multiply it, okay? If I um, have an A borrowed six times, I will have borrowed a total of six A's, okay? I just uh, keep pulling that negative sign through. So as I'm multiplying here, I'm basically multiplying negative six by positive A. And then same thing for the next one. I'm doing negative six times positive eight. Negative six times positive eight. Now I know what you're thinking. People tell me all the time, Kate, that's not a positive, that's a plus. Yeah, guys, when I'm adding and subtracting, I think of that as a plus, but I'm not adding and subtracting right now. I'm multiplying. And so I'm gonna read that as positive. So negative six times positive eight would give me negative 48. And then once again, like this problem over here, I'm done, there's nothing else I can do because this is some number of apples and this is a plain old number. They can't combine, they don't affect each other. I can't do this addition subtraction, I'm done. Okay, now let's carry it through to the trickiest way this is gonna show up on the GED, a problem where I have both multiplying and adding subtraction, subtracting. So again, as usual, I'm gonna follow this order of operations. In theory, I'm gonna do groupings first, then any exponents, uh, then any multiplication and its inverse division, and then any addition and its inverse subtraction. Okay, now I know what you're thinking. Well, Kate, shouldn't we start with the groupings? You just said, Gemma, start with the groupings. Well, yeah. But look inside the groupings, A plus three. Can't do it, they're not like terms. I can't add A's with plain old numbers. Same thing here, A minus seven. Can't do it, they're not like terms. I can't add A's and negative seven. So you might say, well, is there nothing I can do because I can't do the groupings and there are no exponents? No way, dude, you can totally multiply numbers 
times groupings using that distributive property. It's kind of like a way around the order of operations and you have to know that for the GED. So let's go ahead, let's do that. Now remember, if I'm multiplying, I'm treating this not like minus seven, but negative seven. Negative seven times A, I take away A seven times, I'm gonna have negative seven A. And now this is negative seven times positive three. Okay, we consider those plus and minus signs like positive and negatives when we're multiplying. So remember we said when we're multiplying and they have opposite signs, just one negative sign is gonna stick around. So negative 21. Now, here's where you gotta be careful. Careful, careful. I know we read this as minus five, it is minus five. But when I'm multiplying, the easiest way to do it is just take that negative sign with me. This is negative five times all this jazz, okay? So negative five A, you know, um, again, I take away A five times, I'm gonna be at negative five A. Or A taken away five times, A taken away five times is negative five A. Okay, and now this, I subtract seven five times, or I go negative seven five times. Subtract seven and going negative seven means the same thing, guys. Ooh, but I didn't think, oh, oh, okay, let me say it again. I subtract seven negative five times. Ooh, ooh, that's two negatives, guys. This time, I'm taking away a debt of seven dollars five times. Remember, when you're multiplying negative and negative cancel, I'm actually going to end up at positive 35. Cool. Now, I'm almost done, and I really didn't leave myself enough room here, so let's go ahead and... Do the addition and subtraction here. You say, well, Kate, how come I can add and subtract here where I couldn't before? This time I have like terms. In this case, I have apples and apples. Notice how I box up the sign with me. Okay, guys, I take the sign with the term. Okay, so I have negative seven A, I owe you seven apples. And then I have negative five A. Now I know owe you another five apples. I'm already in debt seven. I go down another five. I'm at negative 12 A. See how the rules change based on whether you're multiplying, dividing, or adding, subtracting? You have got to know what you're doing. <laughs> okay, now let's look at the next one. Plain old numbers have always been able to combine with plain old numbers. So there's a plain old number, negative 21. There's another plain old number, positive 35. See how the signs are different this time, you guys? Signs are different. Oh, the directions are opposite. The 21 is going down. The 35 is going up. They're fighting against each other. So I'm going to come to my side work, and I'm going to subtract the absolute values. When I say subtract the absolute values, I'm ignoring signs and just subtracting the numbers as if they were both positive. Okay, so 35 minus 21 would give me 14. And now you must refer back to the original problem to determine the sign. Which one of these numbers is, again, uh, in quotation marks, bigger? Meaning, did I go more negative or did I go more positive? I went more positive, and so my answer is going to be positive or plus 14. Now, a lot of students want to keep going. You guys are so sweet and lovely and obedient. You see that plus sign and you want to plus so badly. But remember, we cannot, we cannot combine uh, things that are not the same. We can't put them together if they're not the same kind of thing. This is some number of A's and this is a plain old number. They're not like terms. I can't combine them. This is my final answer. It does not get any simpler than this. Negative 12 A plus 14. All right. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, go ahead and drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. And uh, definitely go practice this. Even if you don't practice negatives and positives, the numbers by themselves, practice this. You can do it with your GED calculator. That's super fine. Uh, but you have to be able to do the algebra. The calculator can only handle the negative numbers. All right. Uh, if you have any questions about this, go ahead, drop it in the comments. I think I said that already. <laughs> Happy learning, you guys.